Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times, in paradise, in the point lonesome swamp, in the oasis of freedom as we lunge into winter of 2022, you need to go on and look at the 10 day forecast. <laughs> for down here right up through the end of the year it sure looks like winter to me but anyway guys uh, I have to say I got some of my sick twisted enjoyment out of the <coughs> out of the very kind-hearted comments to my video yesterday about whether I should kill the little dog uh, before I kill myself or not. Uh, and so I think some of you got the sick, twisted humor of that, uh, uh, of that video it is obviously, uh, I will never kill the little dog. And as long as the little dog is alive, so will I. Now, when this little dog dies, that will truly be a dark day in the end times. So, uh, I hope that one way or the other we kind of go down together, however that ends out. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm surprised somewhat by the reaction to uh, that video because I've been telling you guys for years that uh, there is no way that uh, Hambone Little Tail is ever going to kill himself. And I, I don't know, maybe you guys think that I'm joking. Uh, and, and that is, there is enough circumstantial evidence out there uh, for reincarnation that you do not die when you die, and that there is enough, just enough. Okay, I, I am a, a fence sitter, but there is just enough evidence out there that uh, that reincarnation and that after you die, uh, you come back to this fucking hellhole uh, as a newborn baby. And my God, the, the, the very thought of, uh, of being reborn uh, as a newborn baby uh, in, in the uh, middle of the 21st century and especially when the you have a three out of four chance of being reborn as a sub-Saharan African. The, the, the very notion of being a newborn infant in sub-Saharan Africa in, in the 21st century, uh, just, just the very notion of it throws me into an absolute state of, of panic. Uh, and, and as much as I despise my life as much as I loathe myself, uh, as much as I understand that life is a curse, not a blessing, as much as I understand that my joyless, pointless existence that I live, and, and as much as I want to uh, lie down and go to sleep tonight and never wake up, I have all of that on one side of the fence, but with uh, on the other side of the fence, you know, the grass is always greener over the septic tank, as they say. Uh, if being reborn as a newborn infant in sub-Saharan Africa uh, is what's waiting for me on the other side uh, of the fence, uh, I'm going to stick it out over here and uh, j just deal w with this fucking day-to-day -day grind, just, just uh, watching the entire shit show uh, come crashing down, uh, just, just trying 
to squeeze whatever drop of joy I can still find uh, since I understand I am spending myself alone that uh, I, I am going to dedicate my life uh, at least to some, you know, living in beautiful surroundings in beautiful weather and looking at the weather forecast for the next 10 days and looking at this absolutely gorgeous place that uh, I find myself in, uh, I, I, I'm going to stick it out here as, as, uh, as depressed and as enraged and grief-stricken, whatever words you want to use uh, for it. But uh, anyway, I did enjoy the, the comment stream, the debate that it set off, uh, particularly among three of my buddies uh, here uh, in, in the tribe. Uh, that would be, <clears throat> of course, Vegematic, Mark J. and Michael Daniel. Uh, the three of you guys, I really appreciate your comments and you can go on the, the comments uh, from that and read this long running commentary uh, featuring those three men and other folks uh, weighing in on the whole subject of near-death experiences, life after death, reincarnation, the whole bit. Uh, I was going to quote all of my buddies, but uh, you can go there and find yourself in that. Uh, I did want to <clears throat> call attention to Vegematic's quote, especially I was so happy, well, not happy to read, but I, I was, what is the word, not exactly happy or relieved, but I was, shall we say, interested in uh, hearing Vegematic mention that he has had not one, but two of these near-death experiences, these NDEs, and they were not these little uh, fucking little, I, I, I don't know, uh, little happy uh, Hollywood endings uh, or beginnings, as the case may be, that you read about in so many of these accounts that, uh, that like, if, if you read the vast majority of the NDE literature and then watch the documentaries, and, and I have studied this a lot, you would walk away with the incorrect notion that 100% of these NDEs are very pleasant, joyful, light-filled experiences. And I would absolutely love Vegematic. I have already asked Vegematic to please share his stories. And I, anybody else who would like to uh, have Vegematic share his NDE stories, please go over on his channel and leave uh, in the comment section, Veg, we would love to hear your NDE stories that were not all love and light. And I... Uh, I had a good friend here in, uh, not far from here, years ago, uh, who died of cancer. She spent 21 years dying of cancer. I was helping her die in the last few months of her life. Uh, and she also, at one point during her cancer treatment, they went a little too far and she had an NDE, uh, and she, I don't, I can't remember how long she was officially dead for, but uh, she came back out of it, and she assured me that there was nothing loving or light about it, that it was a descent into hell, what she saw of the afterlife. 
and uh, and she was a real sweetheart. You know what I'm saying. Uh, th this was a very light-filled individual, and uh, if, if if she uh, went over to the other side and wanted nothing to do with it, uh, I, I listened to that. It, 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 it's fucking bullshit that uh, all of these NDEs are, uh, are all light love and, and, and joy and peace and harmony and all of that crap. So anyway, I have told this story before, but since uh, uh, I have nothing else to do with my life other than hang out with the ghost of a suicide, I might be doing a... Uh, I was actually going to do a video on that. Uh, Brother Michael got me to set that one aside about my uh, new relationship I am developing with Lulu now that she is dead, that I'm actually beginning to enjoy uh, Lulu's suicide ghost. Uh, but that's another story for another day. I am just simply going to retell this story uh, of the last time I really, really came right up to the edge of suicide. It's when I was living in Peru and had built this little tiny house uh, down there in Peru and, and all hell was breaking uh, out in my life. We had the big flood. It was December of, uh, this was all December of 2010, so it was 11 years ago. Uh, I had this big flood. I had this big run-in with the, uh, with the uh, disco from hell uh, in town. I was being run out of Salsa, Peru. Uh, I had gone through this, uh, through this goddamn flood. I was heading into, uh, this was the last time. I, I was thinking that this was the first time that I was ever, that I'm ever looking at spending both Christmas and New Year's Eve alone. And this is actually the second time. It was, so, uh, 11 years ago, I was uh, I was heading into the holiday, so it was pretty much 11 years ago, probably this week, where uh, I had just thrown in the fucking towel. I had just moved all the fucking way to Peru, bought this beautiful piece of land in this beautiful uh, little valley, built this cool little tiny house. Uh, and everything in my fucking life, one more time, turned to shit. All of this fucking uh, bullshit dream I had, uh, you know, about moving to Latin America, starting my new life down there, uh, had just one more time turned to fucking shit in my hands, and, and I had just literally come to the end of my rope, and I had my little dog, Gringo, kind of look like a short-haired version of, uh, of Sancho, uh, hanging out with my little dog uh, down there in the fucking Peruvian Amazon rainforest, uh, and, and, and having my entire fucking life turned to shit, one more fucking pipe dream, going down the fucking toilet. Uh, so I had decided to kill myself. And this is when uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe was brand new. I had been on the air, I don't know, maybe a year and I had like 10 or 20 people uh, viewing my videos and, and getting like one or two comments, uh, you know, back in the very beginning. So anyway, I was talking about, basically, 
you know, announcing to the 15 or 20 people on the planet that I was getting ready to kill myself. And uh, it, it was finding the right time to do it. And so I had decided I was going to kill myself on Christmas Day. That would have been, of course, December 25th, uh, 2011 uh, was the day. So the, the, uh, the out that I had chosen for myself down there in, in Peru, and I had never heard of fentanyl, I did have, it's easy enough to get the drugs, I did have, which I was 99% sure was enough drugs, particularly it was Darvon, uh, that I had enough Darvon to uh, take myself out, and I, and I was going to eat the Darvon, but to really put the icing on the cake, uh, I had chosen the hydrogen sulfide route. I mean, hydrogen sulfide, uh, you don't have to be a chemistry major. Okay, it's hydrogen and sulfur. Uh, you know, it's the shit, if you remember, the Bhopal, uh, India, Union Carbide disaster that killed like 4,000 people in that Union car in Bhopal, India, when that they had that industrial accident where this big vat of uh, hydrochloric acid somehow uh, got contaminated with sulfur and, uh, and poisoned like 4,000 people in the town. Hydrogen sulfide, apparently you get three breaths. The third breath you are dead, uh, and, and it's pretty simple. I, I, I mean, uh, all of the ingredients, I think it's still the number one preferred method in Japan. It's very simple to do. You simply uh, <clears throat> need to combine uh, hydrochloric acid, which that would be your liquid, some form of hydrochloric acid, usually drain cleaners, and, and my, what I chose down there was something called muriatic acid, uh, which they use in Peru to clean tile and brick. There's all of this tile and brick. Real easy to find this shit called muriatic acid. All it is is hydrochloric acid. So I had a gallon bucket of that, and, and then I went to an agricultural supply store and simply got some garden sulfur, which, you, which is the powder. So there's a million versions of this. You, you go find some form of liquid hydrochloric acid, whether it be drain cleaner, muriatic acid, whatever, and then you go to fucking Walmart probably and go to the garden supply. And, 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 you know, and look for fungicides and, and look for something that just has sulfur in it. Uh, just plain old sulfur. Look under the contents. It's usually in a powder form. If you want to kill yourself, it's quite easy to do. You, you, you get some liquid hydrochloric acid and some powdered sulfur. You put yourself in an airtight room, uh, most often being a closet or a bathroom. It, you know, you shut the damn doors and the windows. Uh, you, you pour the powdered sulfur into the uh, hydrochloric acid. You stir it up, and the gas that is released from that is hydrogen sulfide. <clears throat> and you will be dead uh, on your third breath. The big drawback to a hydrogen sulfide death is, is not the, the method of suicide. It's the danger that you pose to the person finding you. That the fresher it is, the, the less time you have sat there and the more airtight the place you did it, 
the person finding you. Like if they burst open the door uh, and, and this shit is still in the air, it could very easily kill the person who finds you, which is probably most likely going to be somebody you did not want to kill. This is a serious drawback. So, uh, if you go on to these sites, how to kill yourself with hydrogen sulfide, you know, the big, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the big thing they say is you have got to post warnings on the outside of the door, warning to anybody who has found you absolutely do not uh, open this door. I am already dead. There is nothing you're going to do uh, to save me. I am dead. You need to get this message across that the person opening the door needs to be in a full hazmat suit with a gas mask you know, that will not uh, take in hydrogen sulfide. This is why I am not recommending to anybody to do the hydrogen sulfide route. And I know one, I know at least one person listening to this, this is their uh, ticket out as the hydrogen sulfide. So you have to clearly post these warnings. So anyway, I had already, the, the, the point where I was in Peru, I had already uh, written the warnings with the skull and the crossbones in English and Spanish. You know, prohibido, no pase. Uh, so I had written out the warnings in English and Spanish, do not enter you know, I was going to do it in uh, my tiny house, but I, I was already, uh, it, it, it gotten this big body bag, it, literally a like a giant uh, leaf bag that I found at the hardware store. So I was going to climb inside me and my little dog. Uh, we were going to climb inside the plastic bag you know, on the uh, on the bed in the tiny house, lay down there. I was just going to pour the sulfur in and, and stir it up. So anyway, uh, I was days away from uh, from from doing this. I, I had every intention of uh, waiting till Christmas because I would knew there was no chance that anybody from the village would have had any, you know, would have been up there uh, at, at my house on Christmas. And it was, I mean, it might have even been Christmas Eve. And, and also, before I did all this, I, I had done, uh, you know, I had read and researched all about these NDEs. I was a big fan of uh, Moody. What's what is Dr. Moody's first name? Raymond, I believe. I believe um, Raymond Moody's body of work and the others. Uh, and, and I was under the impression from reading that, that, uh, you know, death was this absolute wonderful, joyful experience. And uh, so I was thinking that uh, that uh, other than this one warning from my friend uh, that it was not, uh, you know, I was going with, with, with it was going to be a very pleasant thing. And then, of course, my mother, <clears throat> she went right up to her grave believing uh, that, that it's lights out, uh, that, that it's lights out. When you die, she thought 
that uh, what these near-death experiences, she knew it had something to do with brain chemistry, but she wasn't quite sure it was. Well, what it has to do, I am 100% convinced that what happens to you when you die is that your pineal gland dumps a big load of DMT into your bloodstream. So that is what is happening to your, to your meat bag or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that when you die, it, it triggers this DMT dump uh, in, in, into your bloodstream and you're essentially having a DMT trip to, uh, to soften the blow uh, of the death. Now, uh, that does not necessarily mean because it is brain chemistry that it's not really happening. I, I, how many times have I advised the book DMT, The Spirit Molecule, by Rick Strassman. Anybody wondering what's going on with near-death experiences and has not read the book The DMT Molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman, even though it's not necessarily a book about NDEs or alien abduction or whatever else, it is the best explanation of the NDE phenomenon. And uh, I'm not going to get off on a whole rant. So anyway, uh, had I read, I think, uh, yeah, I had read that book two years before uh, this. So I was expecting the DMT dump. Uh, when I uh, when I did the hydrogen sulfide, I was ex looking forward to my DMT trip uh, on, on on my last uh, on my way out. But anyway, what happened to me uh, was like a day or two before uh, I was gonna take myself out. I got this long comment on one of my videos, one of my early videos, you know, where I was talking about suicide. Uh, and it was from this, this holy roller Christian. Uh, he, you know, the, the man, I can't remember his name, he, you know, he let me know that he was a very religious holy roller Christian, but that really was not, had anything to do about what he was getting ready to tell me. And uh, what he was uh, telling me in that long comment that uh, there is, in fact, uh, research out there. Uh, and I can't point you to it. He actually linked me over to it. There is uh, quite a surprising amount of, of, of near-death experience research uh, with people who attempted suicide and were brought back to life. So they, they managed to commit suicide, but they were found you, you know, in that uh, little window of opportunity. And for that subset of people that uh, took themselves out by suicide, the stories they brought home were not, were not little fields of daisies and pink unicorns, okay? Uh, they got their ass kicked from the DMT gods or whatever. Uh, the, the people who do report NDE episodes from suicide uh, pretty much across the board uh, saying suicide is not the way to go. 
you will be uh, soundly get your ass kicked. You will say, you will learn, dude, you obviously uh, did not fucking get it. You tried to cheat. We don't like cheaters uh, out here. When we decide it is time for you to go, we will uh, whoever the we, whoever the little DMT uh, self-replicating machine elves, as Terrence McKenna calls them, when they decide it is time for you to go, then it is time for you to go. It's not your decision. And that uh, if you think uh, uh, that you're going to cheat the system by taking a big fucking handful of Darvon by mixing up your little garden sulfur in your muriatic acid by, uh, you know, putting the damn gun to your head and pulling the fucking trigger uh, that, that you're just going to get a pass to, uh, to paradise, you are sadly mistaken. And uh, so I, I actually went on the, uh, I went on, you know, to the information he sent me to, and I'm sorry I can't uh, link it to you, but I'm sure if you Google something like, uh, you know, messages, NDEs reported by suicide attempts, you will find the same information. And uh, while, uh, you know, while I am still on the fence about it, I am not saying I 100% uh, believe this information, but there is enough information, circumstantial, anecdotal information coming from uh, NDE uh, reports of suicide attempts, and then just of course uh, all of the uh, the the circumstantial anecdotal information which you can find all over uh, YouTube uh, about uh, about reincarnation, particularly being reported by young children. Uh, you know, my mother always just laughed this off, and while my mother uh, generally uh, had it right, and I'm hoping to hell that she has this one right, and that when you blink out, it is lights out forever. I'm hoping to hell uh, that Elaine Mitchell uh, is correct in her call. But, uh, so you guys, you, you, you know, I, I sit here and love to talk about suicide because it, it is, it, it, it is a major, uh, the, the whole subject absolutely fascinates me and especially, you know, living here uh, with the ghost of a suicide, and I will probably uh, come back with uh, another video about uh, my um, ongoing relationship uh, with Lulu's ghost uh, that I, <laughs> uh, after I figure out what it is myself, that I... Uh, actually getting more and more comfortable. Uh, I, I mean, she's the only one I have. Well, I mean, I have the little dog and Lulu's suicide ghost to keep me company. And uh, so I am just learning to hang out with the ghost of a suicide and trying to you know, pick up messages from uh, Lulu's ghost. I would love to hear uh, what she has to report from the other side. Uh, 
But anyway, we will see if I if if I can uh, if I can uh, have a seance with Lulu's ghost. Maybe I'll go get a Ouija board, and Lulu and I will uh, sit here on Christmas and uh, have a conversation on Saturday. Me and the ghost of Lulu's suicide. But anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> once again, I honestly don't think there's any danger of Hambone Little Tail actually taking himself out. Uh, so I'm just going to keep on plugging along in this pointless, miserable, self-loathing existence with uh, with my little dog and uh, maybe the fucking Omicron uh, will be my ticket out of here. Anyway, get out there and uh, develop your own exit strategy while you still can, but if you are thinking about suicide, uh, you do need to Google uh, NDE's messages from attempted suicides, and uh, you might think twice. What do you think, little dog? I'm going to get out back to this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day. Here in the end times, and uh, figure out what the fuck to do with it. I think I need to go find a can opener to open a can of beanie weenies. I think we've been through that story before. My guys. Do you think there's squirrelies out there or not? You ready to get that squirrely? What's up?